So I have a question. When someone tells you that you look lit AF, is that a compliment or a mean thing to say? Because, you know, I think it could go either way, and I think it might be maybe age specific, right? So I think older people would hear that and consider lit as in like you've been having a little bit too much fun on Sunday fun day, right? But the younger generations totally use lit to be like, oh, you look fire. Like you look great, right? And I'm asking you this because I just recently got a comment on an older video that said that. And I'm confused because a number of things. First was they started their comment off with, I don't care, go ahead and block me. I've been hated before, or I'm used to being hated, or some such nonsense. Like it was already like unnecessarily, you know, aggressive. But then they followed it up with, but you look lit AF. My mind goes to it had to have been because you're calling me, you, you're telling me that you think I look drunk, right? Because you started it with this whole, you know, go ahead and block me. I've been hated before weirdness. And then I looked at the video in question. The video in question is actually me looking kind of weird because, you know, I, I tried to recreate an eye makeup look that the kidlets had done on me. And my recreation was very bad because they're good at things and I'm not. But I talked about it in that video. Like that was a focus. And so that was like a, a choice that I, that I made, you know, like I was doing a bit and so probably I wasn't drunk while doing that. But also it could have been that they just really liked my very bold eye makeup look and they were paying me a compliment, you know? So either way, I don't know the answer to it. So I just blocked them. Tell me in the comments your opinion on what you think that statement meant. That would be great. But yeah, they're still blocked. I'll tell you what we're making today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 16 of year three, and soap number two of our testing weird stuff in soap. I have a prop again, so I'm... And today's soap is going to be falling in line with the dandelion soap that we made yesterday, which was scented with a dandelion scent, so all florals. We're going to do another floral for this, but we're going to be using the other dandelion, the stuff that has not been dried, and we're going to put it into the soap and see what happens in the process. So let's get to the video and we can look at all of the cool weird things that continue to happen with this. We'll talk more about why I think we have oils and stuff hanging out in our lye solution, you know, when we go do the thing, you know, where we usually do in the pouring bit. Okay, so today we are going to be using the exact same oil blend that we used for yesterday's soap. And also it will be the same oil blend that we used for the other two soaps, because really what we are testing is whether or not something like a dandelion or a clematis or all kinds of other fun things that I have in mind, really, provide the same sort of slip that you're going to get from a tussa silk or a mulberry silk. Now, with a tussa silk and a mulberry silk, those both go directly into the water in your lye solution. And as I said in yesterday's video, it's all over the board as far as how much you're supposed to use. It's anywhere from, you know, one cotton ball size per pound of oils to one cotton ball size for big old batches. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and using what feels right at the time is kind of the answer to, to that. This is 
for anyone who, you know, wonders and can't really tell just based on how many bars come out of it. This is about two pounds of oils in this batch. It's a batch that will fit brambleberries, you know, 10 inch, the mold, the silicone mold. Anyway, yesterday I super resisted the urge to put all of those little fluffy things that remained after the lye had done its thing and sucked all the weirdness out of it. The hot and the lye and the thing. Super resisted putting those into the batch. And so today I'm just going to go ahead and put them in and we're going to see what happens with all of that. And honestly, I think it's going to be a really fun time because, you know, we're testing stuff. And again, you see how oily this solution is. And there's a little bit of sediment still left there, but this solution is so oily. That is completely wild. And so after further reflection and looking it up and all the things, I have determined that it is in fact oil and not an extract because extracts are made different. As I said yesterday, usually involving alcohol, but at the same time, this could still be doing it because of sodium hydroxide. I don't know. I'm going to go with dandelion oil and all of that. So it's a higher super fat as a result. Not much higher. Actually, it won't even change the percentage. But yeah, way oily, super wild. Also, what was really wild was how dry those, rem those remnants were once I just gave them, you know, one or two squeezes. Super dry. I find that to be very, very interesting because I don't know if you guys have ever seen like when you dip a dandelion, like a fluff ball into water and it doesn't like dissolve or the pieces don't come off. It just comes off completely unscathed and not wet. Super crazy. So I'm thinking we got something, something like that at play with all of this as well, which is a ton of fun. But also the theory that I had heard about why the dandelion doesn't get wet when you submerge it in water is because of all the air pockets that are around that form the circle, you know? And so obviously that's not the case with this because I broke everything up and put it in. There's no circle. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe it's a lot of oil because oil and water don't mix. You know what I mean? I don't know. We're all learning together. And as I find things that I'm interested in doing more research on, I'm doing them and then I'm reporting to you guys. So that's what we are doing with all of this. Now, for this particular pour, I am doing the same colors that I used yesterday with the green or the yellow and the white for the bulk of the bar. Then also the mica that I spilled on the top and just kind of had to drag around. That is going to be within this design as well. So keeping in theme with the same color because, you know, obviously we're making dandelion soap still. And the scent is actually different because I only had one dandelion. And so for the other one I used, let's see, what was it? Oh, I think it was that really good lavender blend that I love so much from Nature's Garden. No, from Sierra Candles. Yes, it's like a lavender and sage and a mint. Yeah, use that one for this because it's one of my, you know, favorite scents ever. And it's one of the few florals that I use that doesn't do massive acceleration which I super love because in my experience, whenever you're using a floral, it's going to get spicy and, you know, get overly thick, but not so with this. So I'm very excited for that. Let's go to the pour and we will check out all of this pour thing and talk more about this dandelion oil. Okay. And onto the pour of this. And for this, basically what I did was I split it into almost two equal parts. So the green and the white and left a little bit reserved, maybe two or three ounces for the yellow because I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to probably use a stir stick or a skewer. Neither of those things. What am I using? Um, I have no idea. A hanger. Yes. I'm going to be using a hanger to maybe pull that green up a little bit more into the white to give sort of the idea of like, you know, when you see a, a dandelion patch in your grass and it it's annoying first and foremost but it sort of grows and they spring up all over the place right in different angles so this one clump goes all the way around it's yeah so that's kind of what i'm going for within the actual design and you can see in here that all of the little the, the fluff that i put into that i just went ahead and left in the batter it's been broken down a lot like you can see that obviously there is, you know, some organic matter in there. 
but it's so light. It's I, it's very surprising because the actual texture and the consistency and how like big all of the little dandelion fluffs were when I squeezed it out was pretty large. It was actually closer to looking like a lavender bud size than, you know, what I'm seeing right now. So the stick blender did an excellent job breaking all of that down. Since you can't, I don't know, I'm interested to see what this actually ends up doing within the saponification, because if it's not going to be grainy at all, you know what I mean? It's not going to be able, you can't call it a an exfoliation bar because it's not going to have any scrubbies. And if it's not going to actually show up within the bar itself, well, there's really no decorative use to it either. So there's probably kind of no point in just putting it in. And I know that some people might be feeling some kind of way about me having put it in in the first place because, well, that was sitting in lye. And so you're going to end up with lye pockets. Come on. That, that is so silly. <laughs> How is that possible? The A, saponification is a whole ass thing. And so lye is not going to just randomly attach to this particular little micro particle because that's not how lye works. And two, the stick blender obviously shredded that stuff to just nothing. I mean, there are just little teeny tiny fleeting bits of whatever, but you know, we'll go ahead and test it. We're obviously going to pH test it. We're going to test it on my skin. We're going to see if my skin burns and fires are created and the world is destroyed. You get it. Point is just stop being silly. But for the top of this, I just reserved a little bit of the remaining batter just to have all the colors represented on top. And I'm just going to do, you know, a little swirly swirl with the skewer and call it good. I didn't really have a super design in mind for any of this because really the thing was I wanted to test this. And having seen it already and, you know, just how cool it discolors the actual batter and how hard yesterday's bar was, I did go ahead and decide that this was, you know, cool enough to put into my summer line and use these for my summer soap. So definitely making more of them. But, you know, since I didn't put any, you know, pre-planning into the actual design, just going to make them all like this. I should get on that, actually. Summer's around the corner. It's been interestingly nice for the past day or so, and I'm loving that. But of course, this does get sea popped and gelled because that's what I do. So let's go check out these bars and see if we can see the dandelion and if they are as hard as yesterday's bars. Okay, now on to the cut of this and it's nice and shiny and you can already sort of tell, I think, just how firm it is just by looking at it. It is a very firm bar of soap. And so, yeah, I don't do that. I don't know why I am still absolutely flummoxed by it. There was no difference in the oils or the clays or anything else that I normally use for my basic three, as I said yesterday. So I, it has to be the dandelion in some way, but everything that I researched about why that would be coming up with nothing really. So I have no idea, but this particular design, it's cute. It's super cute. I needed to pull the green more through the white. So I think probably to get the design to do what I actually want, I would use a little bit more green than white when I am separating everything. And then also take the, you know, hanger back down to the yellow. So it pushes down the white and into the green as well. So all the little points connect. But you know, at first blush, that's an adorable little bar of soap. That's a dandelion theme and has dandelion fluff in it for sure. So I think they're very cute. Now, remember, we will be testing these. So all four bars that I make for this week with these different, you know, plant fibers for their lather and their slip and their performance against a Tussa bar that I have made. And we're going to see if it does anything cool to the soap, which I really am genuinely interested in, because if the idea is it's meant to, it's going to provide the same slippery, you know, the silky feel. That's awesome because as I said yesterday, the silks are expensive, you know, and they're probably hard to come by just generally and trying to, you know, you know, harvest them. So dandelions way easier because there's all kinds of those around. So well, I, fingers crossed that this all works. But for now, 
there's the second one, and also you can't really see much of the exfoliation in any of that, like at all. It's like barely visible. I think that soap looks lit AF. You can take that to mean whatever you'd like. But yeah, I really like it. And also the remnants of the stuff that was left in the, you know, the lye solution, barely showing through for sure. I did test these and obviously we don't have any weird lye pockets going on because the blender is going to break up all of those for such a fine particle like the dandelion, you know, fluff stuff. So that's good. But we'll, of course, test these with the rest of them, you know, at the end of the series. And I'll let you know if my hands start burning or something weird. It's not going to happen. But yeah, it's really fun. And I think it adds a little bit of texture to it. But realistically, it's so sparse that you can hardly tell. I mean, you couldn't even call it an exfoliant. So there's not really a point in leaving it in. I think I would just keep it out. But it's totally fine to leave it in, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's super cool. I quite enjoyed making that bar. I quite enjoyed showing that bar to you. And I'm looking forward to showing you the final two. Now, tomorrow's video, we will be doing a yellow clematis. It's a clematis. I looked up a whole lot of stuff about the clematis, and I'll definitely tell you cool information about it, you know, in tomorrow's video. But as it stands right now, I'm like, oh, that's a flower. There's a lot of different colors of them. I don't know right now, but I'll tell you tomorrow for sure. But yes, if you're interested in seeing tomorrow's, uh, you know, subscribe, do the things. For those who are subscribed, hey, Sudzers, uh, let me know down below what you think of these bars. Are they lit AF? But I got to go because I got to go pick up the kidlets. Thank you for joining me, for being you, for being awesome. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for some sort of clematis round of soapy fun. Bye.